So we're the last day of February now. And I'm going to take advantage of these super dry conditions and settled weather at the minute. So I'm after increasing my density. So you can see there's only 14 animals in here. And when I come back into focus, why is that happening? You can see that you would swear there's lots of cattle in here. Now I have them on a small little square. I was moving them and leaving them for five days. And that was because I was giving them that larger bit of an area because of ground conditions. Now, but as we go up this hill and in there, I'm planning to calve them, well, the ones that are due to calf. Um, but as we come up this hill, the conditions on the ground are getting much better. So I've taken advice from someone online here that made a comment on one of my videos that I should be giving them half of what I'm giving them and he was dead right. And the reason why I wasn't is because of ground conditions. But because things have improved so much coming into March, um, God almighty, what is wrong with my phone? Because things have improved so much and things are dry, land is dry. Look at them now, is this fence on at all? Let me just zoom in there now. They've literally been left into this place here now and they can't but stick their heads out under the fence. But they don't ever come out, fair play to them. So what was I saying? Yes, yeah, so basically I've given them the small little area here. They can go through that hedge and they have a small little area on about half of this again on the far side. Now what I'm going to do is I was getting five days out of uh, the little areas that I was giving them. So I'm going to try and get three days out of here. And what I'll do then is... I won't move them to the far side, I'll just open the far side because it'll save me from moving my drinker, which is down at that white cow. So yeah, so be this little garden and the small bit behind that hedge. Wow, this, this phone is really doing my head in. Um, for the next three days, along with our hay and I might be able to gain an extra day. That would be six days on three quarters of an acre. And that will just be brilliant because it will gain me a day. So instead of five days, split it in half and get three days on both. Plus hay. So that's the story. My phone is behaving now again, thank God. So I'm after leaving them in here, this is the kind of stuff that they're picking. There's lots of it burned off with the frost over the winter time, but there's lots of green in it also. And I, as I say, it's perfect uh, transition grass from winter grazing plus hay to spring flush, lushy, greeny, wishy-washy grass. That's due in the next 30 to 40 days. So we're literally on the countdown now to spring flush and to calving season. So tomorrow it starts in earnest. Uh, there's some of the cows now that's making big progress every day, especially that red white head cow over there. She is very slimy this morning and she's put up a bit of a bag and she has sunk a little bit more. So unless I am totally and utterly wrong, we, she should calf in the next 10 days, maximum. Um, so I'm expecting a calf from the little red short horn there, the red white head, my two white short horns, uh, the belted Galloway. So that's one, two, three, four, five, five calves I'm expecting in the next two weeks. Paddy's day. In around that. And then I think the black white head will be on her own or more or less at the end of them. And then I think this lady here, she's due to calf. And then our springers then are due after that. The blue lady's calf that's drinking at the drinker. So I think that is our times. As far as I can remember, I didn't do anything officially. I didn't write down anything. 
but if I can recall, that's how it worked. They were all bred fairly close to each other. Um, so that is the story. On the last day of February, heading for March, heading for calving season, heading for spring. So a little short video. Um, I might add this actually, I'm going to go back to the calves now. I'm going to move the calves. I have them in a little boggy place that's dry. Everywhere is dry now. That's any, any kind of midland land now is starting to dry up with this uh, easterly breeze we're getting. So, um, yeah, I have an ass in at home. I might let him out and uh, a couple of ponies. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I might do next. I'm going to fence up a little area for them. They can eat away at the rushes. Well, the donkey can, anyhow. So the cattle are content and quiet in here. This is our home for the next couple to three days. And that is it. So we're now at the 1st of March. Is it officially spring yet? Well, there's a bit of hard weather coming apparently in the next 10 days. So after that, I suppose we can call it spring, but it's meant to be getting cold. It's beautiful, dry weather now at the minute. So I'm very pleased and I'm taking advantage of that. I have the whalers here, the bullocks and the bulls on this lower place. Now this is obviously a real, this is a cutaway bog, this, this is, but it's actually very dry now at the minute. So I have these up on a dry place here. Now literally, here, it is drowned wet. And it doesn't, there's not much of a fall between here and there, only about a foot or two. But it's amazing the difference. Now I said earlier in this video, that what I'm doing is, I have my donkey. If I just show you him. The calves were in this little area I've made with the fence for the last few days and they've ate off all the good grass that was in it, if there was any grass on it at all. But I have the donkey in there now, he'll pick away at them rushes and whatever the cattle left behind and I can give him a bit of hay as well. But my main focus is these lads here. So I'm giving them silage now, they're back on silage. Uh, I like to give them silage when the grass is not great, but if I have grass, hay is uh, what I like to give. So they're still getting their little bit of ration there, having a couple of fists a day each. Um, I've gone through three bags, so I have three bags more. That should get me out until I'm on full grass, and then when they're on full grass, they'll be on no more nuts. But it's great to be able to shake a bucket and have them come back here if there's ever a problem. So they're starting to look well. They haven't gone back at all since they were squares and dehorned. He's a full bull there now. Our Galloway hybrid is still probably thriving the best of them. Then I have the two purebred short horns and the two lighter or less fleshy ones are the ones that are out of there. Uh, the dead cow and the lady with the horns, that boy there, they're just showing that little bit of uh, dairy genetics. So, um, yeah, so them ge dairy genetics are going to have to be called out eventually. So that is the story with the calves on the 1st of March. I'll add this to the video today and I'll post it shortly. Very happy with the weather. Ground conditions are bone dry. Them rushes will be cleaned off this year. But this is a little area that I'm very fond of. You haven't to worry about it too much and it can only get better. It's at its worst now. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try and hammer a lot of uh, fertility down into this place here and see what I can get it going. See what I can turn it out like. So I have that side it's thrown up in a bit of a bank there along the ditch in the driest part and they can eat away. So that is the story on the 1st of March. 
I'll post this now. So for now, I'll say good luck and goodbye.